In previous videos, we computed the mean and standard deviation of data sets. In this video, I want to illustrate how that information allows us to say some things about the data set. Now, I've arranged a set of daily sales here from a uh, retail store in thousands of dollars for 20 days. And I put it in a frequency distribution here so I could see the numbers a little better. Now, I've already calculated the mean of this. It's just a matter of tallying up all of these numbers and dividing by 20. And the mean comes out to be uh, 14. $14,000, that is. And the standard deviation, how do we calculate that? Well, I would take the difference between uh, 5 and 14. Uh, that's going to be minus 9. You square that. The uh, difference between uh, 8 and 14 at 6, you square that. And you, uh, we go through the process here, and you total those things up. Uh, the uh, variance turns out to be uh, that sum, which would be 313. And I want to divide it by 19 instead of 20 because uh, this is actually just a sample of 20 days of the sales data. It's not all of our sales data. And so this comes out to be uh, 16.47. All right. So taking the square root of that, we can come out with the standard deviation. Square root of that, uh, 16 point. Seven. It turns out to be just a tad more than four, 4.09. I think I'll just uh, call it four, just so we've got some nice even numbers to work with. Now, uh, the point of this video was to take a look at what's called the empirical rule to see how the mean and standard deviation can allow us to say some things about how spread out the data is. So let's take a look at uh, a number line here, if I could draw a straight line. OK. And we'll put the mean here, 14. And we throw in a few more numbers, maybe uh, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. That's probably enough. And going the other way, maybe 12, 10. Well, I should be a little consistent here. I guess should not be 6, 8, whatever. Uh, now, to we want to assume that this data is uh, follows a normal distribution. So if it follows a normal distribution, it should be a bell-shaped curve. So I'll see if I can draw a bell-shaped curve here. Uh, it's not bad, better than usual. OK. Uh, where the mean is going to be 14 and the standard deviation in this case will be uh, what did I say four yes okay now uh, if I look at this data here I can actually see it, it, it's reasonably bell-shaped maybe not at least it most of the data is someplace close to the mean and it's somewhat symmetrical maybe it's got a little high values here but uh, the smaller values are out on, on the tails. Now, the empirical rule says the following. It says that if I look between one standard deviation on either side of the mean, then that should capture 68% of the data, 68% of the data within one standard deviation of the mean. OK, so in this particular case, uh, if I take the mean minus one standard deviation, which was 4, it gives me 10. So we're talking about uh, the area between, the, between 10 and 14. If I go to one standard deviation above 14, that's going to give me 18. My arithmetic there, it's show my graphs not all that good. So what this actually means that if I look at the uh, 
the data that should fall between 10, I'm not sure if I should make this less than or less than or equal here, uh, the one standard deviation on each side, that this should turn out to be 68% roughly. It also says that if we go within two standard deviations, so if I take two standard deviations away from the mean, so in that case, if I subtract another four, this goes down to a six here, and so I would look at six on the low side, and then what's the high side going to be? I go two standard deviations above at 18, plus another out to 22, that the percent of the data that should fall between two standard deviations should be 95%. Okay, now with these two uh, estimates here, of course, you can figure out what each of these six little pieces should be. Uh, assuming this is normal, so this is symmetrical, if it's 68 from here to here, it should be 34% on each of these uh, little pieces here. If it's 95% uh, from down here to up here, then that only leaves 5% on the two tips. So evenly divided between there would put 2.5% on each of these little tips. Okay, and a little bit of arithmetic would show that 13.5 has got to be here in the middle. Okay, so we've done this a little more uh, precise here. Now, let's go and see how well this conforms to our, our actual uh, data set here. Uh, it would hopefully, uh, it's not going to be too far off, Okay, so if I was to look at the, the the count of how many data points fell between 10 and 18, where would that? That would put me here, let's see, 11 up to, well, here I've got exactly 18. So how many data points do I have here? Well, 3, 6, 10, 11. Uh, and 5 is 16, so there are 16 data points here. So for this particular data set, this turned out to be 16 divided by 20. Well, that's uh, 80%. Okay, so that's a little more than 68%. Uh, what about the numbers that fit within two standard deviations? Let's see if I can get another color here or something. But two standard deviations would be between, uh, let's see, uh, 10 to be between 6 and 22. Well, let's see. It looks like that's going to get all but that first one and maybe all but the last one there. So uh, that's all but 2. So that's going to be 18 of the 20. So that's going to be 90%. So that's a little less than what the uh, empirical value should be. Actually, there's a value here for also for three standard deviations. It says that 99.8% uh, or something like that of the data should fall within three standard deviations. Well, there are three standard deviations. Everything falls between within three standard deviations for us. So uh, that's certainly going to uh, work there. Okay, so what I wanted to do was to uh, show, which will to illustrate this empirical rule and to indicate how uh, it's a rough, uh, roughly allows you to assess the you know, the way the data points are distributed uh, if you know the distribution follows a normal distribution. Well, thanks for watching.